Well, good morning. Welcome to the house of the Lord. I certainly pray it is well with your souls. Boy, we are at a time of year when things are really busy, and it's great when a church is busy. It's a lot of work for some of us, but 
you know, there's lots of things for you to consider, and you don't have to do them all, but I pray that you will consider being involved in some. First of all is this evening at 5 o'clock, we will have our annual church conference, and all members are invited to come and participate. Um, it will, will begin right here in the sanctuary. It will be a cluster church conference, so all the clus- or churches in the East Lycoming cluster will be here, and we will uh, hear some words from our district superintendent, and then we will go as parishes into our own rooms to do our own business. That is at 5 o'clock this evening. And I want to really encourage you to participate in something. And this is on Wednesday evening, 6.30, when the youth usually are meeting. They are inviting you to come and be a part of that night. Um, it will be a night of, there will be a lesson followed by some activity that requires some of you to be here. We need at least 50 people would be great. Um, but it's a night then to, to have discussion and get to know the youth and followed up with ice cream, okay? And so just come out for the ice cream if you don't want to come out for anything. And in the meantime, you'll get to know some of the youth. I know so many people say, well, we never see the youth. Well, here's an opportunity for you to see them. They're inviting you. They want you to come to their regular scheduled meeting. And I hope that you'll consider doing that. Um, Poinsettia orders are due Thursday, and you can sign up to order those out at the connections table. Next Sunday will be our Harvest Home Sunday. In that is also Heritage Sunday, so we will be remembering who we are. But in, in line with the Harvest Home, we will be collecting non-perishable food items. And so if you are willing to participate in this, we will ask you to bring a can or a box of something and bring it up to the front next Sunday morning. And there will be a display here and we'll create this cornucopia of colors and taste and then we will get those to places like Sunlight House who can distribute that food for the holidays. Um, Toys for Tots collections are starting and downstairs by the cafe uh, under the coat rack is a box, and you can continue to donate uh, new unwrapped toys until December 10th. So there's plenty of time, and if the box fills up, we'll empty it, and we'll fill it back up again. So, Toys for Tots. Now, we have a video we would like you to, to watch. Um, this is about our church-wide Advent service, so if you will watch this and... Oh, wait... What, what is that doing in there? That's not the Advent thing, is it? All right, Advent. Oh, I, I don't know what's wrong with this thing. All right. But seriously, uh, as you can see, these are some couple photos from the Trunk or Treat last week. We had a great time. And we had about 150 kids come through. We had to move it from the parking lot into the gym uh, and set up tables. But we want to thank uh, our children's leaders, uh, Kif- Tiffany and Kylie, and, and the whole JAM team for uh, you know, getting that ready. We want to thank all who participated and moving their trunks inside and all who came through. I mean, it was just a fun time, and we really connected with different people in our community who we've never shook a hand with before. But we had fun, and as you can see. But seriously, uh, there is an Advent study that we are going to be providing like we typically do. It's four weeks, um, and you can sign up for that out on the connections table. Uh, There'll be six different opportunities Uh, throughout a week during Advent for you to participate in, but we wanted you to see this video. So why did God send Jesus? Why did God need Christmas? God was ready to do something personal, so God had to do something relational. know where we stood with God if God had not come to stand with us. Think about this. 
how would, how would you know where you stood with God if God had not come to stand with you? A message wouldn't get it done. Another letter wouldn't get it done. Another prophet wouldn't get it done. Until the Son of God And Jesus came into this world, not simply to forgive us of sin, but to be Joshua, to be the warrior king, to deliver you from the dominion, the nation, the power, captivity to sin because the wages of sin is always, always, always that something dies. But the gift, it's Christmas, but the gift of God is eternal. There's that word again, life. And see, as a kid, you grow up, you think that just means I get to go to heaven when I die. That's not what he's talking about. Because the gift that you receive when you place your faith in Christ is a gift you receive right now in this life. You receive the gift of God's life, eternal life, a life free from the power and bondage to sin. A life that frees us from sin's control. That was the gift of Christmas. Right, so please consider signing up. Like I said, you can sign up out on the connection tables to be a part of this study. And now, my friends, let us begin worship in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.
please rise for the choral call to worship. Rejoice in God's saints. seated. Please pray with me the prayer of the day. Almighty God, you rule majestically from your throne. We bow before you and sing of your righteousness. We your, gather in your name and humbly request that you come and bless us with the wonders of your love. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please consider, continue your prayers of joys and concerns in the silence of your heart. Our Heavenly Father, blessed us with his son Jesus. 
And Jesus came to not punish, but to bring us back. He gave us a way through him, through his dying on the cross, that our sins are forgiven. And while he was with us, he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now it is time to give our tithes and our gifts to the Lord. But during this time, please take moments and think of ways that you could add activity to our church in something that you can do. There are ways to help.
Gracious God, dedicate these gifts to your kingdom work and my life to you as a living sacrifice, bringing all my actions under the atoning blood of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, come and fill your temple. Please be seated and let us continue in our worship by joining our voices together in our prayer hymn. forward to a day when there will be no more burdens, there will be no more sorrows, no more hurts. But until that day comes, Lord, we must bear them. But we don't bear them alone. Lord, we can bring them to you. We can cast them at your feet and you will help us. You will strengthen us to carry our burdens and if possible, you will take them from us. Take that weight from us. But Lord, the burdens are there. We all have them. And sometimes our burdens are our own that we, we carry. Other times, though, we, we carry the burdens of other people, those who we love, those who we care about, and who are going through trials. And so we walk with them. We pray with them. And we encourage them. And in that way, we carry their burdens. We also carry the burdens of, though, of, of those we don't even know, strangers. Lord, as we see something happen in our community or we watch the news and we see what's happening in some other countries and the wars and that lays heavy on our heart and their burden becomes ours. And while we may not be affected physically by it, Lord, our hearts break for them. And in that way, we carry that burden. But we take that and we cast it at your feet. And we trust you to deal with it. Lord, in this moment, let us take time for each of us to reveal our burdens to you and to lay them at your feet.
Thank you, choir. Please join me in the prayer of illumination. Living God, help us this morning to hear your holy word that we may truly understand, that in understanding we may believe, and in believing we may follow in all faithfulness, seeking your honor and glory in all we do. Through Christ our Lord, amen. A reading from Revelations. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband, and I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them as their God. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also, he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. Those who conquer will inherit these things, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. But as for the cowardly, the faithless, the polluted, the murderers, the fornicators, the sorcerers, the idolaters, and all liars, their place will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls of full of the seven last plagues came and said to me come I will show you the bride the wife of the lamb and in the spirit he carried me away to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city Jerusalem coming down out of the heavens from God it has the glory of God and a radiance like a very rare jewel like jasper clear as crystals it has a great high wall with twelve gates and the gates to the twelve angels, and the gates are inscribed the names of the twelve tribes of the, of the Israelites. On the east, three gates. On the north, three gates. On the south, three gates. And on the west, three gates. And the wall of the city has twelve foundations, and on them are twelve names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God, the Almighty, and in the Lamb. And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God is its light, and its lamp is the Lamb. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the, of the earth will bring their glory into it. Its gates will never be shut by the A and there will be no night there. People will bring into it the glory and the honor of the nations, but nothing unclean will enter it, nor anyone who practices abominations or falsehoods, 
but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wine strained clear. And he will destroy on the mountains the shroud that is cast over all the people, the sheets that is spread over all the nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. From the Gospel of Luke, chapter 22. When the hour came, Jesus took his place at the table and the apostles with him. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer, for I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves, for I tell you that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine, until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after supper, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Today is All Saints Sunday, a day set aside to honor and remember those who by faith have gone on before us into glory. Today also happens to be the first Sunday of the month when we here at First Muncie celebrate Holy Communion. And the main reason we celebrate Holy Communion is because Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. When we take the bread and the cup, we remember that Jesus' body was broken for us and his blood was shed for us on the cross. Not because Jesus did anything wrong, but because we did. We were the sinners, but by grace, he spared our pain and suffering and took it upon himself. Further, this knowledge of what Jesus has done for us should convict us in our hearts. It should break our hearts, bring us to our knees to a point of repentance where we feel such sorrow that we say, Lord, forgive us. When we receive the bread and the contents of the cup, when we accept them into our bodies, we are saying, yes, we accept Christ's offering. Yes, we Um, acknowledge his sacrifice. Yes, we accept his forgiveness. Thus, through the Lord's Supper, we remember what Jesus did and we can seek and receive, receive forgiveness and we can be affirmed in our salvation and we can be strengthened to carry on. Do this in remembrance of me. Through the Lord's Supper, we remember what Jesus did and what he continues to do in our lives in the present. But the Lord's Supper also does something else. It it gives us a foretaste of the great banquet that is to come in heaven. 
It is a promise of the second coming, and it is our source of hope. It's what we, we, we trust in and we look forward to. Jesus told his disciples in Luke 22, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover meal with you before I suffer, for I tell you I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. And as he passed the cup, he said, I tell you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine again until the kingdom of God comes. Until then, do this in remembrance of me. So we not only remember what Jesus did, but we look to the future and what he will do, and that is to share in the holy banquet in heaven. And this banquet will be a wedding feast for the Lamb when Christ is united with the church, which is all of us, all of which will take place when the new heaven and new earth are set in place. Revelation 21 tells us of that great and glorious day. We, we read earlier that the holy city of Jerusalem will come down out of the heaven prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. The new Jerusalem will come down from heaven down to the new earth and will settle on the mountain of the Lord. As Isaiah 25, 6 tells us, On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all people a feast of rich foods, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich foods filled with marrow, of well-aged wine strained clear. The wedding feast of the Lamb, when once again Jesus will share in the bread and the wine as he promised. At this feast will be rich foods filled with marrow. And the Hebrew language describes this as meats with fat. They are the fatted meat, which was the best and the tastiest of meats. Have you ever had a steak from an unfatted um, beef? Anyone? And I'm not talking about lean beef. I'm not talking about where the, 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 the fat has been trimmed away from the meat. I'm talking about beef that has had no fat from the beginning. It's not very tasty. As most of you know, my dad owns a sawmill. And often farmers who needed lumber to repair their, bo their barns would trade beef for lumber. So we always had beef growing up. Um, but most of the time, the side of beef that we got was not from a fatted steer, but from an old milk cow. <laughs> Same animal, but fed much differently. And, you know, let, let's just say it wasn't hosses. And, and nothing against my mom's cooking, okay? This was all the meat. A friend of mine went to Africa, and after being there a couple weeks, he had, a, oh, he had this urge for a steak. So one night, as he was out, he ordered a steak. He said it was the worst meat he had ever eaten. He said, I couldn't even finish it. And that's because in Africa, the, scow, the cows are skinny. You know, they, they, they're not fed all the rich grains that we feed our cows here. They just graze off of whatever little grass they can find, and it's not much. And so the cows in Africa are skinny, they're lean, and not much fat at all. And therefore, they're not very tasty. But at this feast that the Lord will prepare for us, he will serve only the fattest and tastiest of meats. And the wine? Mmm. They will be aged to perfection. Isaiah says that it will be well-aged and strained clear. And what he's talking about is that in order to make the wine strong and good, the, the winemakers would leave the lees or the dregs in the liquid. And that would allow it to continue to ferment and become stronger. And when it was time to drink the wine, well, then they would strain it through a cloth to get rid of the lees and the dregs and have a nice, strong, aged wine. Isaiah makes a point of this because in Isaiah chapter 24, when he describes God's destroying of the old earth, God also destroys the old wine. But now in the new earth, God is going to restore it, and it will be of the utmost quality. So the Lord's Supper helps us to look forward to that glorious banquet in the future but there is more. 
For when the Lord destroys the old earth, Isaiah tells us, he also destroys the shroud that is cast over all his people. The shroud spoken of is the burial cloth, meaning that God is going to destroy death. He will wipe away every tear from our eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning will be no more. Pain and suffering will be no more. For they are part of the first things, the first earth. And the first things will have passed away. On the night of the Passover in Egypt, before God sent his agent to slay the firstborn of all the unbelieving in Egypt, God commanded the Israelites to eat a Passover meal. After they had been set free, God told them, do this annually. Every year, do this to remember what the Lord God has done for you. So they did it to look back, to remember how God had delivered them from slavery in Egypt. But they also looked forward with anticipation, knowing that they were going to the promised land, a, God, a place that God had you know, just purposely prepared just for them. They, they remembered what, where they'd come from, but they looked forward to where they were going. Just as the Passover meal celebrated deliverance from their oppressive lives of slavery and new life in the promised land, so the Lord's Supper is our Passover meal. It looks back in remembrance of our deliverance from slavery to sin and death, but it looks forward to our life in the eternal promised land, a place that God has prepared just perfectly for each one of us. So when we partake of the bread and cup this morning, remember what Jesus has done for you, but also remember what he has promised he will do and take hope, be strengthened, and give thanks. Speaking of giving thanks, in just a couple of weeks we will be celebrating Thanksgiving, a time when most of us gather together with friends and family and give thanks to God for all the blessings in the past year. Unfortunately, though, for some of us, our loved ones will be absent from our table. Their chair will be empty. However, one of the things that the, you know, the, the Lord's Supper does is it reminds us of what Jesus will do on that great and glorious day when he will reunite us around the banquet table with all of those who have gone before us and have received their crown of glory. Today, All Saints Day, we celebrate, we honor, and remember those in our church family who have faithfully run their course and have received their crowns of glory. So let us testify to their faith, their memory, and their legacy by reading their names and spending a moment of silence for each one. And as the names of the saints are read, I invite family members and close friends to stand and represent the departed saints. Richard Miller. Doris Fritz. John Phillips. Jan Madison. Garth Everett.
Norman Jake Levan. Tony Rebuck. Lida Ritter. Clara Bennett. William Likens. We also light a candle in memory of our friends within the congregation who have gone on to glory. And we light a candle in memory of all our loved ones who have departed us. This day can be a day as we look at the light and we smile, we remember our loved ones. It can also be a day, though, that brings back painful memories and a reminder that of our loss, that they are no longer with us. But do not be disheartened, but take heart. For they are now part of the great cloud of witnesses who cheer us on in our journey of life. Therefore, let us run our race in such a way that one day we too may receive the crown of glory and be reunited with them around the banquet table in heaven. Amen. Will you please stand as we prepare to receive a foretaste of that banquet. Please stand and let us profess what we believe. Oh, I'm sorry. You may be seated. I did this earlier. In tribute to those saints who we've just honored, let us sing for all the saints.
as we prepare to receive a foretaste of the heavenly banquet, let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again, ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks to our it is right and a good and joyful thing always and any everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, God of Abraham and Sarah, God of Miriam and Moses, God of Joshua and Deborah, God of Ruth and David, God of the priests and prophets, God of Mary and Joseph, God of the apostles and the martyrs, God of our mothers and our fathers, God of all our children to all generations. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here, and on these gifts of bread and cup, make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. Renew our communion with all your saints, especially those whom we have already named before you. Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, strengthen us to run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Christ, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Amen.
Friends, the banquet is prepared for you. And I invite you to come and receive a foretaste of that glorious day. Come.
Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the privilege of gathering as your body here today, not only to remember the saints who have gone before us, but to gather with them and to partake in a foretaste of the great banquet that we all look forward to. As we go forth from here today, may we truly represent you and be part of that body that the world may look at us and be drawn to you. This we ask in your holy name. Amen. And now would you please stand and join us in our closing hymn. Now, my friends, go forth in the power of the saints and in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>